All right, peace family. I should be live right now. I should be live right now. This is uh, Brother Rich with the incredible Dr. Phil Valentine. I'm gonna let the people fill in the chat room uh, while they do that. I got some ads to uh, play for y'all with some brothers and sisters who have some magnificent businesses. So make sure you support these brothers and sisters, um, support and, and you know, support black businesses. I will right, we'll be right back family. see the chat rooms filling in welcome to everybody thanks for tuning in uh i want to start out the show let me get this right on my end by first and foremost i need the family out there everybody out there i mean let me say this the majority of the information we see on the internet right now spiritual metaphysically related health related the man i have on the lines have been talking about for quite some time, way before YouTube, way before Facebook, before MySpace, uh, even before DVDs, uh, shit, even some of it before VHS, it was on audio tape, some of, some of his uh, Dr. Valentine's lectures, I believe. So um, shout out to Sci-Fi in the building, um, uh, doing the moderating, give Sci-Fi a shout out. Uh, but I, I need everybody at this time to show support and donate to this brother. The brother has a cash app. He been holding it down. I would not exist. You know, this is a metaphysical channel. And this metaphysical channel would not be here if I haven't studied this man tapes for years. So, um, Dr. Valentine, tell the people before we start, my brother, and welcome. I didn't get a chance to properly present you, but I, I, I want to get this out there first because there's people watching this live, and then this show is going to be on my channel for however long this channel exists. So, if you're watching it five years from now, you know, see if you can still donate to this brother. It's never too late to donate. What is your cash app, my brother? Thank you very much, brother, for this invitation. And greetings to the brothers and sisters of TAP. Um, um, the cash app is capital S, as in science, and lowercase u, n as in Nancy, n as in Nancy, u, and the number seven. So that. S U N N U, the number seven. That should put you in as soon as you see that. When you put it into the search box, uh, my name should pop up and uh, you'll be into my account. Okay, okay. So that's uh, dollar sign Sanu7. Uh, sci fi, Indeed. if you could post that link in the chat room. Um, okay, yeah, I seen she just put, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. please donate. Hit this man up. By the end of the show, I want this brother to text me after the show and say, Brother Rich, these people was hitting up my cash app, Brother Rich. Thing. You know, I want him to tell me that. So during the course of this show, I'm going to continue to remind y'all. But make sure y'all hit up this brother's cash app for all the work he's put in. Uh, you know, we just seen the brother Nipsey Hussle pass away, and everybody loves people when they pass away and they're not here. We got to show love while people are here. You know, I don't need everybody crying at 
Dr. Valentine's funeral. I need I need y'all to celebrate the brother while he's here right now, physically with us, still teaching us and giving us valuable information. So make sure you hit up that brother's uh, cash app, Sanu, dollar sign Sanu7. And with that being said, Dr. Valentine, welcome back, my brother. Welcome back. Good. Hello? Hello, hello, hello. Yeah. I'm around the room. Yes, thank you very much. Good to be here. Good oh. to be here. All right, so I, I want to start out like this, Dr. Valentine. Um, I mentioned, just talking just now, recently there was a passing of a brother named Nipsey Hussle that got the whole hip-hop community talking, got a lot of people talking, a lot of people uh, thinking about death, uh, thinking about life, thinking about you know uh, uh, um, spirituality and what happens and why these things happen, you know, the topic of Jesus and Christ came up. All types of conversations emerged from this uh, wonderful brother's uh, um, uh, passing uh, transition. I want to ask you, Dr. Valentine, let's get a little spiritual, a little metaphysical. What exactly happens to the soul at the time of what we call death? What's going on? What's death to the soul since we are not the human body that we think we are, Dr. Valentine? There's a lot of people who have been uh, following this path know that there is no death. There's only something that we identify as transition. Uh, energy can never be destroyed. It's just either redistributed or it takes on another form or it goes back to its original form. But it is always in movement. Everything continues its vibratory rate. It's that the body stops vibrating in coordination with the spirit and the soul. So what we are essentially, and what we're inhabiting, essentially, is what is called a kupalot in the Kabbalah, which is a shell. We are animating it just the same way that we can cause our car or any other machine that we step into to animate uh, because we push certain buttons and so forth. With us, it's drawing breath. With the drawing of breath, our first breath as we exit the mother's womb, the drawing of the breath actually kick-starts the engine, so to speak. And then from that point on, we learn how to navigate in the shell. We actually expand our consciousness into the shell as the shell begins to grow. And uh, we go through that pattern. Now, when we begin to leave, or when we leave the shell, in the case with uh, Nipsey, he was ejected from the shell. Mm -hmm. which then becomes a kind of a traumatic thing that the soul carries. But the soul itself, depending on what it is that is, uh, um, the soul carries signatures, energy signatures, based upon our deep emotional uh, experiences while we're in the flesh. The soul is a kind of an, a calibrator. It's a, a place where we store uh, the deepest, uh, and most impressionable information and experiences that we have as information. And so usually when, say, we've come to the point where the, the, the machinery no longer can support uh, the light of the soul or the light of the spark, then there is this gradual, say, for instance, you see our elders at 90 or 100 and so forth, the elders, when certain parts of the machinery begins to shut down, at death, there is this very quiet uh, removal of the body, and I know this because I've had that experience when I was very young, and I can remember it uh, very vividly um, when I was living in Trinidad and drowned. There is this feeling that there is this movement away from the body, and you can actually feel uh, like a removal of sensations from the body. The, the bottom of the, of the feet going up to the body and the hand. And that's when you see the person's eyes go up to the top of their head. It's like they're following. The body is following the spirit out through the top of the head. Mm. A lot of people who've gone through, um, say, if you've ever been on, in an operating table like a friend of mine was, uh, he described his operation uh, when he had a, um, a, a brain uh, aneurysm. And uh, when we took him to the hospital, the doctor said he was a Filipino doctor, and I, you know, I give all praises to this brother's uh, uh, work because he worked on him for six hours. And when my friend came to, 
He said that he watched his whole operation from above the room. He remembers everything. He remembers what the doctor did. He even recalled what the doctor said. Mm. So if that's the case, then he wasn't totally out of the body. He was just simply using his cord, that, uh, that, that silver cord that attaches us, so to speak, to the body. And he just hovers there and knows he wasn't going to die at that particular time. In the case with Nipsey, it was snapped. He was ejected from his body, which is usually a very traumatic thing. Sometimes it's karma. Say, for instance, Nipsey came back after being, say, a warrior who took many bodies and lives and an old as a karmic signature he had on his soul. But when he came back at his point of his past incarnation, he came. He, he began to see that you know all of the warriorship that he did, all the things he did at that time. When you get to be an old warrior and you survive many wars, you begin to really take into consideration what you did and who you were. That's why he came back in gang, you know, um, violence, streets, and so forth. That was his nature. But he came back with a whole other mission, and that's when the soul begins to make a transition towards a particular um, realization. And he now, with that, probably signed a contract and said, "Okay." All of what I did in the previous life will come back to me, and I will pay that price. But before I do that, I will do all the things that's necessary that I would then convert that energy, that warrior energy, into that uh, one that builds rather than destroys. So when he came back, he came back through that particular energy, but he brought a whole other dynamic to it. He became almost like the Shaolin monk kind of energy, came up, on the streets, the priest saw him, came in, and then is that particular part of him that was already involved expressed itself in all of what he wanted to do for his community. So, yeah, it's, it's a contract we make with ourselves. Uh, it's only experience. That's what I like to get everybody, all my, all my students, when they come to our university or my university, what they do is they study about what it is to be a hue, H-U-E man, or an entity that lives within the shell. And the entire thing that we're experiencing here is nothing more than that word, experience. It's only experience. No matter how evil, no matter how good, and no matter what it is, it's all about clocking experience. Hmm. So I, I guess essentially our soul learns from... Uh if our soul, well, well, the thing is, if our soul is all-knowing, and I might have asked you this before, I'm not sure, but if our soul is all-knowing and it belongs to the all or it belongs to the eternal now or this, this quantum field that knows everything, has all the information, what benefit would a negative experience be to something that knows all? There's, no, there's only experience. Again, there's no negative experience or positive experience, but it's only experience. It is we who qualifies it based upon what it is that we see as reward or punishment. Mm -hmm. It is our assessment of that experience that makes the experience either good or bad. There's some wicked and evil bastards out there, the ones that are especially terrorizing children, are sacrificing children, and all, all the ones you see that's getting ready to go down. Uh, to them, it's all good. Mm. So in what sense do we actually see them uh, because from their lens and from their perspective, what they're doing is good. It serves them. It's all about, uh, I said that there are, two, there are two operational dynamics in consciousness, service to others and service to self. And those who are into the STO or service to, to others are the ones that come out like, listen, they want to do something that is greater than themselves. The other thing, uh, the, the, uh, the ST, uh, S is the ones who service the self. They want to do everything for themselves. They don't want to become anything other than what they are that serves their own experiences, whatever it is that the body can give them as a sensation, whatever it is that that, that particular mindset can do to serve it, serve them greater and to make them greater in the perspectives that they've created for themselves, that's what they do. So they'll kill, they'll take, they'll rob, they'll steal, they'll, they'll cheat, they'll lie, and all of that is good to them. 
So it, there's no perspective. If you want to take it from a metaphysical perspective, of course. But there's court, there's righteousness, there's ones who, like us, we want to walk that balance. We want to be able to uh, bring that, that sense of harmony to where our ancestors taught us in uh, the 42 um, affirmations. We want to make sure that everything we do is in balance and in harmony in Ma'at. And then there's those who feel that unbalancing things is just as good. Chaos, they live for it. They, they live for the excitement, for the adrenaline rush. It's their drug which is why they're so hooked into the adrenochrome. They got to have that rush. They got to have this high. The body to them is insufficient. It becomes numb from so many different types of experiences that they've sucked out of it. They need to keep heightening the experience in order to feel real. Mm. You know, with Nipsey passing at uh, the age 33, of course, you get all the comparison and, and the way he passed and what he did for the people and who he was around, and what he, how much he loved his, his community, all the comparisons that Jesus started to pop up. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, we just, Easter just passed, so, you know, everybody's been talking about Jesus anyway because Easter just passed. I want to ask mm -hmm. you, I, I was reading something, I, don't, I forgot where I heard, but... Um, you know, uh, they was comparing, they were saying Jesus and Lucifer is really, well, they're one and the same. That's what they're saying. They're both the light of the world in the Bible. <laughs> but, and both of them are really an allegory to describe phosphorus, which resides in our DNA. So could you clear, clear, uh -huh. could you clear set that up for me, Dr. Valentine? <laughs> my brother, my brother, my brother, back in 1985, 84, in Philadelphia, on a Philadelphia radio, I brought the entire black church in Philadelphia down on me when I was the first to make the comparison between Lucifer and Jesus in the Bible in Revelations, mm. chapter 22. Right. This is I was the first one to do that. Next yeah. Day. Wow. I did that <laughs> back then. Some before you all, some of you all were even born. <laughs> yeah, they're making those comparisons now because... I guess people are now brave enough to go up against the priests and, and, and the, the, the cult of Christianity uh, to tell, you know, that if they want to take the word, the literal word of the Bible, then let's talk about the literal word where Jesus says, I, Jesus, um, have uh, done something uh, into my churches. I am the, uh, the root and the sky of David and the bright morning star. I'm just paraphrasing, of course. Mm. So if Jesus is calling himself the bright morning star, so did Lucifer was called the bright morning star. But, of course, uh, Bible theologists and, 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 and all of these specialists will come and say, well, no, there just, there's two different types of stuff. No, 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 no. We're not going for it. I said back then in 1984 that there were actually two, two redeemers. The first redeemer was Lucifer. Mm -hmm. When I told everyone that Lucifer redeemed us from perfection. And of course, I'm speaking in paradoxes and parables and in metaphor. So don't take me literally. Understand that when you're dealing with the mind of man, you have to deal in paradoxes. Because man does not have all the answers. Man is the proverbial question in search of the answer. So you have to understand that we have to look at something that we cannot encompass like eternity, like infinity, like quote-unquote God. We cannot encompass it and know it and understand something as massive as that. So what we do is we start playing with opposites. We start messing around with language in hopes of capturing some kind of meaning to give us that experience. So what I'm saying is that Jesus and Lucifer were redeemers, yes, but they were in a story arc dealing with how perfection, which is what the creator is, actually retracts upon itself to create imperfection so that it may know all of what it is that qualifies it as perfection. And what I mean by that is Lucifer came to a perfect entity called Adam and to Eve, which essentially Eve was not a woman. Adam was a bisexual entity that did not have any sexual organs or anything of that nature. It was part of the expressed intelligence of the one most high. And what happened was it was living in a vibratory rate that could not sustain it because it was now outside of the realm of unity. It was existing in the realm of duality. 
So it could not stay there or else it would die. So perfection equals death. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to achieve. So what happens? The story goes that God itself creates itself as Lucifer, and the story goes that the serpent, which is actually the, the, the symbol of wisdom, <laughs> come on, <laughs> it goes to Eve. Eve is not a person. Eve is not an entity. Neither was Adam. Eve is a time, a moment in the movement of existence at the eve or at the beginning of beginning so that Adam and so the serpent went to Eve and told Eve, listen, fight of the apple, which means to participate in the body, told Adam to participate in the body that is given so that you can fall into matter and get out of perfection and go into the movement and dynamic of perfecting, mm. which is the dynamic of perfection. So you have to get out of perfection, which is a trap, and into the realm of movement and perfecting, which is essentially the perfection of matter. So that's what we're here to do, perfect matter, to change matter into spirit by our existence in it. So when Lucifer told Eve, eat this, pass it on, have an eat that, that's just a, a metaphor for you to get, get your mind, get into understanding the body, go into converting, get into your, new, your devolved state so that you can evolve so that you could take this new thing, this experiment, and go with it. Now, after that, you notice that Adam left and went into the land of Nod, which, of course, we know that when you nod, you go on to sleep. So the sleep, essentially, is the sleep of God. The sleep of God, in the, is, is, and, and what we are, is the dream of the Creator. So the dream of the Creator is to know itself, and it knows itself as this crazy, this crazy thing that we call life. Now, Jesus comes back and says, listen, yo, no, y'all are going off the Richter with this. Remember, y'all are gods. Because remember, Jesus was not the son of God. He was the son of man. Which means there's an aspect of man that is divine that man forgot. So the idea of Jesus was to actually, not only Lucifer redeemed you from perfection, now Jesus is to redeem you from your imperfection. So understand and understand that you have to get past all of these little story book gross fairy tales. The people in church are like little kindergarten kids. They go for these stories of people, you know, he walked on the water and all that. That's not why we're here. These stories are to open up other kinds of stories that are already embedded in your DNA. You got a whole library of experiences in there. You got the mind of God ready to be uh, explode into enlightenment with the new, and you don't know how to tap into it. That's why they're giving you virtual reality. That's why they give you all these little toys so you can push and pull and, 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 and play your little games. They got you distracted from the true technology, which is you. Mm, wow. That, that, that was a hell of an answer, Dr. Valentine. <laughs> that was, I was, I wasn't expecting that. That was a hell of an answer, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you're talking about the the true technology, with it, which is us. Uh, I've I've heard people talk about meditation. I've heard you talk about meditation and the importance of it. Uh, some of our people don't understand don't understand how important meditation is because we're constantly we have to constantly move. We're constantly on the move. Um, what what's so important about stillness? Can we talk about stillness for a second? In a society that's so fast paced, why is stillness so important? Well, stillness is the way that you interact with the the, the intelligence within you. Intelligence is not your thinking process. It's not what you've learned. Intelligence does not go uh, to search your past. Your thoughts are there for that. Your thoughts essentially are nothing more than catalogs, just like you download and you've recorded and you've got uh, folders that you put in certain data. Well, that's what your thoughts are. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts are nothing more than emotional uh, data uh, that have, well, it's actually data that's tagged with an emotional signature. So that when you recall that thought, there is a specific kind of whatever it is you experience in that moment comes back with that thought. 
And we believe that when we go into our thinking process that we're somehow accessing God, we're not. We're accessing only the data that we've accumulated by our experiences. Meditation is to come to the knowing that your thoughts are not you. They're simply what it is that you put in there and accept it as you. Mm -hmm. There is another aspect. It's easy. What you do is go into a quiet space. Now, when you're thinking about something, you can actually close your eyes and actually think about something. And if you close your eyes and pictures come up, you can actually see your eyes following the picture. Right, right. The question then becomes, who or what is it that's actually looking at the thought? Is it thought looking at itself? Or, or is it something else other than thought actually giving you feedback to your thoughts? Mm. See, when you're looking at your thoughts, it is the true you, which is what we call the observer in our school. And what I've learned from my teacher, Krishnamurti, you can't, you can't, your thoughts can't look at itself because those are trapped in time. Thought is trapped in time. Every time you go back to a thought in your past, you are time traveling. And your time traveling back to the moment when that thought was registered as a chemical signature and as an emotional signature. And every time you go back to that thought, everything that happened in that past comes back to you in the moment in the, in the present. So you time travel and you're playing back then. A lot of people live in their thoughts, they live in their past. They have to because what we do, we gotta have work, we have to remember remember how to put on our pants and our clothes. We have to remember what to do day to day just to survive and keep this body, uh, you know, healthy. But when it comes to us coming to access who we are, yeah, we don't do that very well. That's why meditation, or what I call me dictation, or I dictation, is a form of, uh, I guess, putting your your computer and your brain, putting that computer. Uh, to, how do you say that, there's a, there's a to sleep, or to put it on, um, what's that thing when you, that you, you don't turn the computer off, but it, um, uh, I know what you're talking yeah. about, I, 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 don't, I can't forget the name, but I know what you, um, yeah, it, it's, um, uh, it's, uh, sleep, put the computer yeah, sleep, yeah, sleep, sleep, yeah, yeah, and when, when you got your, when you go into meditation, a lot of people want to put something there to block thought. And that's not what meditation, as I said so many times before, that's not true meditation. What you're doing is you're still do, using thoughts to try to uh, find a space inside of all your thinking to, for you to you know, get away from it all. It doesn't work that way. Your thoughts are you only because you've been conditioned and you've conditioned yourself to believe that. So they're going to always be there like your children, like, like uh, cackling geese. Always wanting attention. You know, is the stove here? Oh, man, that dude owes me money. Do I need to call him? And, and all these things start coming in your head. That's not who and what you are. In meditation, you have to allow that to flood in. And the problem with us is that we have judgments that keep us affixed to those thoughts. The less judgment you assign to your thoughts, the less they come into your head while you're meditating to bother you unless you give them that same kind of anxiousness and same kind of anger or love or joy or addicted feelings, the less you do that, the more you go into an empty space. And it is in that empty space that you find you, the true you. Because now the, 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 the awareness that comes from or is transmitted to you through your observer is not interfered with. It is not obstructed by these thoughts that want your attention consistently. Since there is no attention on the thoughts, then what now lies beyond the thinking? And you begin to find that when you begin to uh, not give these children of your brain and your children of experiences that you call your thoughts, if you don't give them that attention, if you don't assign the judgments you put to them, this empty space puts you into this place within yourself and you begin to go into a, a place of calm. All of the rest of the energies in your body align because every thought you have in your head, family, is assigned to a particular organ. Let me say that again. Every thought you have in your head, be it anger, jealousy, greed, hurt, fear, each one of these energy signatures 
always have a connection to one or more of your organs. Mm. So every time you think a particular thought, like if you have a lot of fear, mm -hmm. that's in your kidneys. Right. If you have a lot of anger, that's in your liver. So every time you think a specific thought or you subconsciously think about it, you are sucking energy from that particular organ. So when you no longer put your attention on that particular thought or thoughts and you go into meditation, you release your organs and then they begin to resonate back to what they really were about. And these were places where harmonics of the divine give you up-to-date information from the omnibus. You know, it's funny, when you, was talk, when you was just talking about organs, the first thing I thought about is music and organ, the organ. Mm -hmm. And you was talking yeah. about the harmonics of God. How close is music related to our body and our cells and, you know, just who we are as, as, as a being? Because we are vibrations. Because each one of our organs vibrates to a particular note. Mm -hmm. C sharp, E, A, all of them, actually our major organs, all have a specific key and harmonic that they vibrate to even hertz and megahertz. And we don't want to go all this way because I don't want to get too technical at this point, but you know, most of that is in our lessons when we teach at our university. But know that the frequencies that you can get on oscilloscopes and on different, uh, uh, different machines, these are actually tapping into what your body gives off as an organic feature. So the blood is, your blood is not just blood, it's not made up of, of uh, different plasma and all these different uh, humors that they call them. Your blood is actually a liquid crystal. Right. And as a liquid crystal, it is tuning in specific um, um, vibratory rates that your organs are giving off. And it's feeding those organs based upon what you put into your body, of course, and what it is your thoughts are thinking. And the blood carries those signatures to the organ. And there's this interplay of communications between your blood, the organs, and your brain, and your mind, and the, uh, what we call the attention, uh, the attentionator, <laughs> we call it in our school, which is our observer, that part of you that's looking at those thoughts when you're thinking them. Uh, can you talk to us about the, um, you know, you mentioned the brain. Uh, they say there's a second brain in the gut. And that brain is actually what controls or is telling you what to do or it's a sense of our intuition or whatever. Uh, what, what is this second brain in the gut that they talk about? Yeah, a lot of people start speaking about second brain. The second brain only is activated because you become addicted. The second brain is the one that deals with the physical body. The second brain, which is uh, got which organ they talk about, uh, they speak about it sometimes even being the duodenum uh, because of the fact that um, uh, there's, uh, the, uh, they give it to the, the adrenals as well. Mm. Uh, so the second brain essentially is the collective, the collective energies that the physical body radiates back from the original brain. In other words, the second brain is just picking up uh, information and processing what is the, the instructions that the body must have in order to operate properly in synchronicity with one another. So they talk about there being a second brain, the gut second brain, uh, you know, that is uh, regulating you know, hormones and so forth. This second brain is nothing more than the brain that is created by the habits that you uh, create and are created from the time you're a child also. The second brain is also a monitor for what your soul brought back as its lesson plan. Mm. So your soul, some people come back and say, well, wow, what's wrong with that child? The child came back, uh, did the mother, something happen to the baby when there was a mother, or is there something genetically going on? Well, your body is a map. It's, it's actually a contract. It's a biospiritual contract. And the soul that inhabits that body has certain unfinished and unresolved energy patterns that has come along with it. And that takes on a genetic pattern. So the soul, when you go into the body, the body looks like it's just flesh and blood, but there's a part of the body that is just air. There's a part where all the nerves 
just seem to get thinner and thinner and thinner until they're almost microscopic. Well, at the point where the nerves seem to disappear and become so gossamer that you can only see them under an electron microscope, at that point where the nerves become so fine and so gossamer, that's where the soul is. Mm. That's the energy of the soul. But the spark of the soul sits in the, the, uh, the heart. That's why the ancestors use the heart to weigh whether or not you stay here to go through another incarnation or to move forward. Uh, if you look at the uh, ancient Kemetic, you see that the scales of Ma'at are weighed against the feather. The heart is weighed against the feather. It's the sino-auricular node, it used to be called. That part that they hit with the refrigerator, mm-hmm. you know, clear, boom. Well, that part, the sino-auricular node, is where the soul sits. That is the doorway between the here and there. And so when they hit that electric spark, it's bringing you back into the body. It's telling the soul, don't leave, hold on. Let me just kickstart the body and start the electrical principles that maintain the soul in the body. Indeed, wow. Um, since, you, since you brought up the heart, you know, let's talk about emotions for a second. Um, black, what we call black people are very uh, emotional people. You know, the way we walk, the way we talk, uh, the way, you know, we, we move our hands when we everything we do is very, very highly, highly energetic. So we see a lot of things uh, on television that causes us to invoke fear in us and, and invoke certain emotions on us, whether it's social media, whether it's the news, uh, whatever it is. There's a lot of negative images out there that evokes negative emotions within us. Uh, they say emotions are frequencies. So if I get, are you, are you telling me, Dr. Valentine, if I get, what, what's happening if I see, uh, like recently, let me just give an example. Um, police in Florida, they was bashing the head of this black kid, teenager on, on the ground. and Just the crazy shit that they usually do. Nazi type shit. Um, our emotions, am I, am I, am I bringing more, more of that to my reality by watching that? Can I watch that to have empathy for my people or am I bringing more of that into my reality when I view things like that continuously? The thing that, the thing that harms us as a people is that we do not get balance to that particular experience. When we see something like that, we implode, we don't explode. And they expect us to be like that. That's the slave mind. When you see an injustice and all you can do is just look at it, that's what they want us to do. They want us to become frozen behind our screen. Very few people actually get up to do it, and the ones that they pay to do it. Because remember, the people that you see, like Black Lives Matter and the Me Too movement, these people are paid Mm -hmm. to march. These people have given millions of dollars to do that, it's a job for them. It's not a spontaneous combustion of righteousness. It's about them helping with the agenda of those who essentially see us as nothing but cattle. So we are what we call, what my teacher, one of my teachers, Baba Ishangi, used to say that we're a cayenne people, hot. Our melanin, you know, transfers and translates cosmic energy much more efficiently into the movement of the spirit, the movement, the, the dynamics of life, the harmonics of life, the frequencies of life are picked up more, uh, more efficiently through the melanin molecule. And it's calibrated as a form of um, activate, consciousness activation. And our, our rhythm, our, you know, our dance, our music, everything is in tune. It, it tunes us today. You know, they have caused so much disruption. The scientists, what I call the scientists of efficient extinction, of, of these, uh, the, the people out there that are now working on the extinction of at least three fourths of the people on this planet. Know that, and you know you will understand what I'm talking about. Um, I'm going to be doing a, uh, a webinar um, coming up soon, and I uh, just wanted to let most people know before I continue. Uh, that this webinar will be talking about survival and what it is that they're doing on the deeper levels uh, to undermine you, uh, to how to be prepared and so forth. So um, 
I'll just give out a email for you to send uh, your name, address, and telephone number so I could put you on the list and then let you know when that particular uh, webinar will be held. But that, as I said, that we are essentially not we're imploding with our energies. Our, our, the expression of the energies are being marginalized into maintaining the patterns that we have and the, the types of distractions that they're being given with movies and video games and so forth. They already have started preparing, for instance, do you know that we, we are now that there's a bill before Congress to turn us into compost? Mm, no, I didn't so know. that when you die, yeah, when you die, there's a bill that passed, I think it was there, over there in Washington State. Uh, they're legalizing the composting of human corpses to recycle us into the food supply. So essentially, they're going to uh, use the human bodies and like cover them up with a lot of straw and dirt. And just like you let a, a dead body or a manure compost into the soil, they're going to use your organic bodies that they have to compost the soil. And then that soil then will be uh, what is used to grow food and so forth. It's been, it's passed, by the way. Uh, it is uh, before the house, and they call it bio-sludge. But they forget that in bio sludge that's being used as the new uh, foundation for food sources have over 55,000 chemicals and poisonous materials that they're using to grow our food. And this is not by accident. They want to crop and kill people. They want to uh, speed up the, the cellular life, the cell life of humans today so that uh, if you have within your genetics the ability to live to 90 to 100, especially with everybody being all health conscious, they want to set the stage for your body and your genetics and the clock that you presently have as your body to become fast forwarded. In other words, they want your future death and all the things that would have caused your death to be accelerated at this time. And they are working on that seriously and it's the, the composting of humans is supposed to start next year. Wow. So we're now, we, we are, we've reached the place at this time where we're going to be getting into soylent green. You, 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 you the people are, are, are the young people of today, you don't know nothing about soylent green. But when you do, do me a favor, look at the movie with Charlton Heston called Soylent Green, S-O-Y, L-E-N-T, and check that word, soy, S-O-Y. It's called Soylent Green. And everybody was eating Soylent Green because the whole food supply, the Earth's food supply, had somehow dried up. So you people out there that are, that are thinking that you're going to make your own little farms and so forth, make your own little farms to do that, they'll kill those farms off. If they know you're feeding the people and you got a farm that is not under government control, they're going to kill it off. So you have to learn how to do your thing underground or inside the house, grow your food in the home. But I don't want to just drift off. I just want to let you know that uh, there are things out there that are going to be the new attacks against you, and they're going to talk about how you can circumvent that. But the first, you know, it's always been my my uh, my my, uh, my style that I want to teach you how their their weaponry works, the tactics. All right, but some people sometimes they get kind of blurry-eyed when I start getting into the minutiae of how the tactics work. Please study, study the tactics and the, and the way that the tactician is coming at you so that you will not be surprised when they make their move. Indeed, indeed. Before we continue, family, I mean, this man is, I mean, this man, this is a powerful show right now. I want y'all to make sure once again to donate to this brother's cash app. Um, it's uh, sci-fi. Could you post that cash app one more time for me, sister, uh, Dr. Valentine's? It's dollar sign Sunu7. That's S-U-N-N-U-7. We're not getting this type of talk anywhere else, family. It's very hard to find somebody on the internet talking like this. So if you appreciate this content and if it's helping your soul, uh, make sure you support. Make sure you give this man some currency because he's giving us currency right now so make sure you support this brother via cash app dollar sign s-u-n-n-u-7 
and uh, he's going to give information later on about the webinar. So stay tuned for that as well. Dr. Valentine, I want to talk uh, briefly about recently. Uh, let me see if I have it here. Um, recently, they came out and said that they have seen a black hole for the first time directly uh they've seen it in i guess indirectly or something like that but they finally through this telescope the event horizon telescope finally unveiled the first black hole image uh could you what, what, could you talk to us what, what exactly uh are they lying to us have they been seeing black holes directly what exactly is a black hole and what, what does this mean uh dr valentine well i have never you know after i've you know decided to uh, come out of the illusion yet again because I'm not perfect. I've been messing around in the illusion. I have graduated out of a lot of the teachings that I've uh, done because that's how you have to do. You have to learn and you have to discard what is no longer necessary. The things that these people that are you know, from NASA, and you got to remember you can't trust NASA. You cannot trust NASA family. Mm -hmm. And NASA essentially is a Nazi organization that was started by Nazis, Nazis that were here, and Nazis that came over on Operation Paperclip. Anybody telling you they found a black hole, to me, to, NASA needs to remain relevant. They need to remain relevant because so much information is coming out to debunk a lot of the nonsense that they've been giving us. Yeah. Nobody's going to Mars. There's no Mars. There's only the, uh, the fanciful illusion that they will read. And let me tell you, y'all don't believe that we are Mars. You all believe. I mean, did you see? I didn't see it, but somebody told me that, that uh, they saw this movie, Captain Marvel. Mm -hmm. And when they looked at Samuel Jackson, they swapped a gown that they were looking at him from 25 years ago. 30 years ago. Mm. The, the, the pro pro Project Blue Beam and the type of technology that the Japanese have been working on right now, and they showed you to a CNN broadcast that they were talking to someone in a hologram that was standing right there in the studio mm -hmm. but was not real. You're going to believe that you are on there. You're going to be in this place. It's the Matrix. So they're going to be able to set up a web of electronic, uh, uh, free-floating electronic data that's going to make you believe that these people are actually in outer space and on Mars. There's no Mars mission. There's only the illusions that they want to maintain so that they can distract you from actually knowing what it is that they're doing beyond Antarctica and up in the North Pole, underground, and all over this so-called flatted earth, I call it the flatted plain, uh, that I've come to, uh, to speak about over the last, say, four or five years, um, that after being reintroduced into that you, and, and knowing and sh being shown and having direct contact with uh, a gentleman from NASA who was the one who painted the pictures that NASA used as the pictures of Earth, I'm in contact with him. Mm. And he, he, this dude was the one who painted the pictures. He's a, he's a, he's a comedian, you know, he's, he's raw, he's like us, he's a European. But the dude is the one who painted the pictures, and I, and I, and I guess that your people were there at my lectures when I showed you the names and the, and the pictures of the people who were painting these pictures. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, um, you can't go... The gathering, yeah, yeah I don't know, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, now, you, know, you can't go up online, go up on a Google, and ask them to put up a picture of the Earth, and they're going to see one of those pictures they created. The same can be said for that black hole that they're telling you they found. <clears throat> it's to keep you current or to keep them relevant on the, on the illusion. They will always come out with some fanciful, look what we discovered. Look what we're getting ready to do. We're putting billions of dollars into this circus show. And of course, who, who are us? How are we going to actually verify what they're saying is true? Do you have the means of going into NASA and saying, hey, this is bullshit. Uh, hey, I've seen this and I know exactly what you're doing. No. 
So you're on the outside as an audience. You're participating as an audience, as the sheeple. And they're giving you what it is that's necessary to maintain their power. And I believe that this dude Trump said, we're going to deal with the space race because he's about to expose them for what they really are. And I think he's doing that because I think he knows that it's all bullshit too. I don't know. Because I've been watching this clown fest going back and forth that they that they got us looking at and saying, and they, they don't feel that all these clowns to run against him. And it's the most ridiculous show i mean yeah. it looks like saturday night live on you know on it is it's a it's just a dumbasses going to running a, uh, for president so it's a clown fest don't believe any of that black hole nonsense it's it's you're going to see somebody's probably going to come along with a sane mind and a, and a true scientific mind and expose that for the falsehood it is if we could say, where, where can we say, now we talked earlier about the passing uh, of the brother Nipsey Hussle. Um, you know, we have ancestors, we have parents, grandparents, elders who made the transition. Where are they now? According to the ancient teaching, some people, I heard some people say they go to live inside of us once they make the transition. Well, according to your information, Dr. Valentine, where are these ancestors that we talk about? Where are they right now? <laughs> They're in our minds. They're in the and they say the way you stay a uh, legend, the way that you that you uh, that you live forever is in the minds and in the heart and the songs that they sing about you. You know, it's so interesting that Nipsey Hussle chose that name because he was actually using the name of an old black comedian called Nipsey Russell. Russell right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think a lot of the young people know, even know who Nipsey Russell was. But um, it's so interesting that he used that particular coordinated coordination of sound. Uh, and I think that was, that was nice because we got both generations, the older generation who knew where it came from and the young ones who are discovering who he is using that moniker. But uh, the ancestors are around us as an energy in our minds. Remember, your mind is what creates reality. So they are a spark. And remember what you are. You are nothing more than a projection into a quantum set of space. In other words, a quantumized space or what you call a, a, a resistor called uh, three space or third density. So you have broadcast yourself into this, uh, almost this gelatinous thing that we call our atmosphere, the air, the water, and so forth. Time. Time is also an element, and that's a whole other story in itself. But what I'm saying is that you are a projection. You just look at the lights. The Native Americans used to say that the stars and the domes, these are where all the ancestors sit. They sit in accordance with the specific um, sign of the zodiac uh, to which their works were actually uh, uh, radiated from. So if you're a Cancer, if you're a Leo, if you're a, um, if you're a Gemini and all these, the ancestors and their works were based in all of these particular star clusters and configurations, and each one of them are beaming a specific quality of energy to which the ancestors supposedly sit. Now, of course, they say that um, uh, the dome is actually keeping back a whole other form of space, which is water or a liquid medium, we are actually inside of a, uh, a very rarefied form of water. And that in this rarefied space, the spark that made us what we are and who we are is radiated outward into this space and it is alive. The air you breathe is alive. The mind that casts forth thoughts, which are energies, is alive. So we're in this particular plasmic space that is vibrant with souls, billions and billions of souls that are as part of the light energy that the sun, the moon, and so forth, all of what you sense and feel as energy, as heat, as cold, as all the vibrating forces, it is within that fabric that the ancestors exist. Mm. Wow. Um... That is, that's why they, because that's why they, when you call upon them, depending on what particular part of the energy envelope they're occupying in, you can call upon them. And what happens is 
that sets up a signature connection and like an umbilical between you and them. And they say, well, my mother was there. I called my mother and she came into my dream. Well, yes, the image of her acts as a witness to draw the energy that is her to you. Indeed. So I guess that goes into our mind being non-local because some reason we think our mind is confined to our body or our brain, but uh, they talk about non-locality of uh, non-locality. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's by locality. By by locality. Yeah. Okay. In other words, when you start put, connecting to your ancestors, one specific ancestor, like your mother, your grandmother, or you said something like that, that by locality is that that's the connection. That's how you. You tune into that particular frequency. That sometimes becomes almost um, like uh, uh, telepathy mm. uses by locality, and and uh, there's another a form of um, when you can touch something that belonged to someone else that say they use for like maybe the most of their lives, mm -hmm. and um, I forgot what that's called. But uh, those I think your your people are people who who listen to you. I know that they're very smart, and I know. They know what that means. They know what that is. Indeed. Um, we got about 15 minutes left, family. I want to thank we got about uh, 900 people in the chat room. I want to thank everybody for tuning in once again. Make sure you support the brother, Dr. Valentine, and donate to the brother's cash app, dollar sign, Sanu7, S-U-N-N-U-7. Make sure you support this brother while he's here and not while the book not when he just passes away uh sci-fi post that uh link again my sister please for dr valentine to continuously remind the people to show support dr valentine um one of the things that like you said everybody earlier you know we have this health consciousness thing going on now where everybody wants to well not everybody but you know there's a big vegan movement and people are are looking into organic foods and it gets kind of tricky sometimes as soon as you think you got something organic you find out that you know they don't mess with that or mess with this so um i want to ask you in terms of spiritual metaphysics um they say we're talking about the mind they say that the the brain doesn't know the difference between reality and imagination if Dr. Val, if that's the case, and they had this test where athletes pretending like they were working out or something, and the and the and the nerves that activate the muscles actually triggered, they seen the muscles actually getting mm -hmm. triggered through the imagination. Dr. Valentine, since the food can't be trusted, if I sit down and I meditate, Dr. Valentine, for half an hour, and I imagine myself getting some magnificent sunlight, eating a, a, a apple and and eating some kale. Am I going to release the same chemicals in my body that will be released if I actually ate that kale, ate that apple, and got that sunlight? Is, is that Would that be the same thing since our brain doesn't know the difference between imagination and so-called reality? Remember that saying that I said, matter follows mind? Mm -hmm. Matter follows mind. Mm -hmm. In other words, there's only mind. Mm -hmm. And everything else essentially is nothing more than a growth, a flowering from mind. Your body is a flowering of the mind. So essentially you are the, you take it back to the stalk and to the root, you know that it is in the soil and that's where it, it draws its energy and sustenance from. Uh, yeah, since I know for a fact that you can make yourself hungry, you could feel hungry, you could feel satiated. How do you think that there are yogis that can go for eating uh, maybe uh, maybe for an entire, like, six uh, months without oh, eating. Oh, okay. Right, right. Right. What they do is, the breath, you are not the hamburger of, of life. You're not <laughs> the lettuce of life. You're not the uh, tofu of life. You are the breath uh, of life, family. Mm. You are the breath of life. The breath is everything. You can stop eating for 40 days and 40 nights and still live. You can stop drinking for seven to ten days and still eke out an existence in the body. You barely, but you'll still be alive. But stop breathing for five minutes. And that will tell you what is the most important thing keeping you fixed to your body and to life in the body. It is your breath. When you go outside and you inhale right after a snowstorm, I mean a rainstorm, for instance, and then the sun comes out, that, that when you're smelling that, that negative ion, when you smell that, you feel, it feels so good when you smell it. When, the, when you cut grass, fresh cut grass, that smell is the release 
of these negative ions that you're breathing in and you feel full. And if you can use the breath, if you know how to use the breath, and this is the problem, what are we breathing today? Why do you think that they're putting them chemtrails up in the air? Why do you think that they're constantly putting uh, into, into the, uh, the gasoline all kinds of waste materials that they want to get rid of that they can't get rid of in the ground? So they're giving them the air to the cars and through everything that they're smoking out of the stacks. So when you're in a place, say forests, that pick up all of the pollution, and you go into the forest and you breathe, you're breathing in the electromagnetic energies as well as what is known as the solaric force. The solar or your sun's energy interacts with the atmosphere, which is essentially nothing more than qualified water. What you breathe is just another form of water. Mm. And what you, just like the fish breathes another quality of water, you're breathing just like the fish, but with a whole other apparatus. And so your apparatus does not fit what the fish can do, but they're now doing that, by the way. They do have different technologies that can actually use uh, uh, stick gills. Uh, they're getting ready to use gills so that the human body can now do what the fish do. And they've been working on that. But that's another story that's going to, be, uh, that, that's going to come up in the future. But again, uh, what you have to know is that the sun itself interacting with the, uh, through the solaric force with the atmosphere and with the molecules and with the, uh, the particles in the air. When you breathe that in, you're breathing what it is that sustains you. When you eat, for example, your food does not become part of the body economy. It is what is, the, what is, it is, what is in the food that causes the agitation of the cells that causes it to release the sparks of life from the cell. But the cells just simply give off the energy from the irritation that the food through digestion gives. Because if you look at this, if you eat, say, three pounds of food, in your colon will be three pounds of waste. So the food does not actually become part of your body. What is in the food is extracted and then becomes part of the body economy. But for instance, the, the, uh, the, the minerals that you're taking in from food are not the original minerals that your body makes. Your body makes its functional and fundamental minerals from the breath. Your breath creates the fundamental minerals of the body. Everything you get from water or the food are secondary minerals that you need, that you take in, because your body now has become so degenerated. Okay? So there are things that we don't know about as far as the body economy because they're never taught in school. We teach them, but they don't teach that to the people who are, who are, who are anatomists. Well, when you go to learn about body and anatomy, they teach a lot of information, but the doctors that, I have, that have been my students and nurses who have been my students they have a whole other outlook of what life is about when they come to our university. It just puts to sleep all of what they thought they knew about what life is, is in the body. You, you know, we st in studying ancient uh, history, Dr. Valentine, at one time, you know, there's things that we see in movies that we're like, we're amazed by. Like, um, we talked about Marvel earlier, like the ability to fly. Um, mm -hmm. Also, being a water creature i forgot they just had some movie come out um oh, i forgot the name of it but at one time in ancient history were we water creatures at one time were we flying creatures you know dr Valentine? We're creatures of every element we were creatures of every element every species of life that's on this planet is an offshoot of our mind because the earth itself at one point the story goes if you look at certain books like mahabharata and uh, certain books that are ancient books that we've stolen and taken information. The earth itself, what we were looking at was gigantic crystals. The crystals that you see, I don't know if you've ever seen pictures of these gigantic quartz crystals underground in these caves. Right, I did, yeah. I'm talking about they're like the size of buildings, mm. okay? I mean, the ones that you have on your desk, that's nothing. <laughs> I'm talking these things are the size of three, five, and six, and ten-story buildings. 
And these are quartz crystals. That's what the earth was. You were not a solidic form. And the earth that you see, the dirt that you see that makes up the, the caves and all the solid forms, these were added later. You were a being that lived on a crystallized form of energy. An entity that did not have a sex. You were a spiritual form that were able to cast forth your thoughts or an impression of your expression or an expression of your impression of reality. And you could immediately, it would immediately happen. You retain that power, although very attenuated and very weak. When you have, say, for instance, thoughts of when you're having good sex, you had a good sex, oh, well, two days ago I had some of the baddest sex, oh my God, <laughs> blew the top of my head off, and what happens? Immediately your body starts happening. I mean, sisters, the nipples start getting hard, brothers, you know, we grow the, the standing rod, and we start saying, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Ain't nobody here, but you're feeling it. Well, the very fact that your mind can actually initiate and agitate that feeling in the body just from a memory now. Just imagine what you could do by putting a memory, or not even a memory, but an image in your mind, casting it forth and seeing it there manifested before you. That's the power that you had. Now, people will listen to me. I can see some of the people listening to this who don't like me at all, especially those who got this thing, this problem with color. We got this intra-racial kind of nonsense going on with light skin, dark skin. I've been getting a lot of that because my students have been telling me that there are people who are talking about me being white and light skinned and all this kind of crap. I think we're still stuck in that nonsense. I don't know what's going on, but uh, I guess they must hate Steph Curry and all the rest of brothers like that, you know, because they're light skinned or whatever. I know I'm deviating from that, but I know that a lot of the things that we talk about, Brother Rich, uh, they're not ready for people. People are not ready for it. Not everybody's ready for what I speak about. They weren't ready back in the ni- in 19... Uh, um, in 19... 19- 84. And I know that there's a whole crop not ready now to just think I'm full of shit and they just think that I'm just here to mislead the people. They only think that I just speak like this, that this is all I do. They don't know what I do when I'm not speaking or teaching or lecturing. They don't know I have a whole world of teaching and assisting and dealing with uh, consultation and things of that nature. They don't know what I do off grid. So I know that they're going to look at this, what you present, and you have such a great platform. And there are a few that come on there as trolls, and I'm addressing them. And it's got this thing where, you know, they don't like what I talked about with uh, Brother Malcolm X and, uh, and, uh, and, and Obama. Well, prove me different. Okay? I put it out there because someone had that information. Prove me different. They don't like what I say about Islam or Christianity. Prove me different. I don't mind it. You know, but uh, to just, you know, talk about the, the teacher and start talking about what he is or is not personal, you don't know me that way. You don't know who or what I am. All right? So look at what it is that I'm giving to you. And this is not me just blowing bubbles. I'm just saying, look at what it is that I'm speaking about and what Brother Rich has created a platform for. And instead of telling yourself no, open books up and start speaking about it, and not just, but don't just, uh, you know, cut and paste what somebody else that you feel better about said. Go and investigate for yourself and come out with your own knowledge and see what it is that you find to be your truth. But anyway, just uh, I just have to rant that one off because a lot of times I'm tired of brothers, my brothers who, you know, I speak to calling me out and telling me what they find on, uh, on the media and so forth. I'm really tired of that. We should be over this light skin, dark skin crap. Uh, look at Nipsey. Uh, look at Nipsey. You know, he's brown skin. I mean, he's got straightened hair. Uh, he's a, a Dravidian. He looks like my grandfather. My grandfather was Indian. So, I mean, wh- who are we? You know, and I know that every black man is over here saying that he's an American or he's a, he's a black man, indigenous, and all that type of stuff. I bet you you look far back enough and find a few white folks in your in your uh, in your in the back of your shed. So you know, let's get over that type of nonsense. And none of us pure over here. The only purest ones over there. You see, a Senegalese and some of the brothers and sisters from down there in Sudan. You ain't from there, so stop pretending. Stop you know 
telling us how really weak your mind is. Look at what a man does and what he does not do. Stop, you know, start, stop fighting one another, you know? Anyway, I'm sorry, brother. I didn't mean to go off on a rant, but, um, it's all right. <laughs> you know, it, it really pisses me off when we start doing this type of feeble, uh, petty kind of nonsense. It keeps us separate. Anyway, um, I do have, um, I just, if you can, just, can you give everybody my, uh, email? Yeah. Yeah. Let me get it. Uh, the, and tell them. Please, uh, family, if you want to join this, this is a private webinar, by the way. It's going to be private. Um, I'm trying to get about two or 300 people on board, and I know probably, <laughs> thanks to you, Brother Rich, I probably will. Oh, yeah, we're going to get and, more than uh, that. We're going to get more than that, brother. <laughs> <laughs> and what I want to do is just give you this. This, this is uh, one of my private emails. It's Sunu, the same word, S-U-N-N-U, 777 at gmail.com. S-U-N-N-U-777 at gmail.com. The reason why I use the 777 is because I have a 777 in my number. Okay. But anyway, the Sanu777 at gmail.com. What I want you to do is just put there in the, and put on all bold caps in the subject box, webinar. And then I need your name, your email, and a telephone number so that my, uh, my, um, uh, my assistant, my administrative assistant, can contact you in the event to let you know uh, what's going on. All right. Indeed. Once again, man, family, this has been an absolutely magnificent show. I want to thank Dr. Valentine for coming on the program again. Um, I'm going to continue to remind you guys, even after the show, uh, once Val Dr. Valentine gives me more information on the webinar, I'm going to post it at the beginning of my shows so you guys can uh, join this webinar. I think if you like what you heard tonight, you will definitely appreciate the webinar. Dr. Valentine also has a school. Can you tell them about the school, doc Dr. Valentine? Uh, yes, the University of Commission Sciences. We are now actually signing up people for our summer class. Uh, the summer class begins June the 15th, I believe, or June 10th, I believe, uh, somewhere around there. You could just, uh, you could also inquire about that. You can go up to our website for our university at UKSNOW.org. That's U as in United, K as in King, S as in Science, NOW.org. And by the way, everyone, uh, just to be clear, I'm going to be talking about how you may be able to very quietly and very, very, in your own small space, prepare for any emergency as well. You see, they're trying to kill us off with this vaccination by forcing them on us. Man, yeah, they do. Um, Dr. Valentine is getting, yeah, yeah man. Mm -hmm. And you know that we've been fighting this, uh, this for the last uh, 35 years. I'm right. the one who started the vaccination exemption package. Uh, back in 1984, 1983, actually, somewhere mm. around that time. Mm. But you got to be ready for 2035 because by that time, there'll be no more SS uh, Social Security. They get rid of all of that. So don't even think that they're taking Social Security out of your check to give you anything back by the time 2030 comes. And that's the time when they are probably going to start with the epidemic. It's going to be germ warfare. So it's about getting your body together, getting your body prepared, getting your children stronger because they're the ones that's going to meet up with that barrage the tactics are for your children they're not just for you they're for your children to weaken your children and to distort the endocrine system so that they don't know what they are male or female so that they can carry on the seed so just know that the war is going to be a covert war on your internal mm. uh, machinery okay Man, if y'all don't sign up for that, something wrong with y'all, man. Um, I want I want to thank everybody for in the chat. I'm I'm talking to Dr. Valentine, and from time to time, I'm reading some of the comments. And very a lot of um intelligent people in the chat room. Uh, a great discussion in the chat room. So I want to thank Sci-Fi Living for moderating the chat and everybody who contributed in the chat room. We got about 950 people watching right now. I'm sorry to say, but we're going to have to end it. Make sure you contact Dr. Valentine Sanu777 at Gmail. And I'm going to text him right oh. after this. Yeah, go ahead. My, I'm sorry. My telephone number to contact us if you want to call us for vaccination exemption, consultations for our juice plus and so forth is 800. Please take this down. 800-847-1234. 
800-847-1291. Again, 800-847-1291. Thanks. And on that note, uh, family, thanks for tuning in once again. Brother Rich, Dr. Valentine, we are signing out, family. I'm going to see you next time.